or Kuchle. How much time we got? Nine minutes. Oh my word. This one hour for lies. All right, study the graph below. Okay, let's get a nice bright color. Let's go with perps. Okay, study the graph below of the men. Oh, here we go. Menstrual cycle and the influence on the different hormones. Okay, people, you will, I can't say you will always because I'm not a fortune teller, but let me tell you something now. If I was setting your final exam, there would be a question on hormones in the menstrual cycle because it's the hormones that regulate everything in the female's body. Okay, that's probably why we are so full of nonsense. But at the end of the day, it's the hormones. It's the menstrual cycle. This is what makes it all work. Otherwise, we can't have babies. And if we can't have babies, we can't procreate. And if we can't procreate, human beings will die. Okay, we will end up just disappearing off the face of this planet. We must procreate. In order to procreate, we need a, a menstrual cycle. So this is how it works. Okay, first thing, you have the hormones that are in, made by the pituitary gland. There are only two. There is the follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone. Okay, so the pituitary produces follicle-stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Now, what does this name tell you? This name is follicle-stimulating hormone. So guess what it does? It is responsible for the growth of the follicle. What is this follicle called? It's called the, or at this point here, it's called the graphene follicle. Okay, yeah. And the graphene follicle, as the graphene follicle grows from there to there, and it finally gets to this point here, it starts releasing estrogen. This whole follicle grows inside the ovary. So if this is the uterus, okay, and then we have the cervix, and we have the vagina, okay, there we go. Now, this little fallopian tube, and then the fallopian tube comes down like that. And over here, we have the ovaries. Okay, here's our ovaries. The spot marks X. And this little growth of the follicle happens here, inside the ovary. Okay, that's your uterus, vagina, and all of this is actually relevant when the hormones don't work. All right, now, so pituitary releases follicle stimulating hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone causes this little graphene follicle to grow. The graphene follicle sitting in the ovary cause, it releases, it releases estrogen in the ovary. Okay, what does estrogen do? As estrogen goes up and up and up and up and up, as the graphene follicle gets more and more and more developed, so the estrogen level goes up, it stimulates estrogen stimulates the pituitary gland to release follicle stimulating hormone. Now listen to, I mean luteinizing hormone. The name is luteinizing hormone. It has two functions of LH. And those two functions are number one, it causes ovulation. And number two, it causes the formation of corpus, better put the there, huh? corpus luteum. Because it is the luteinizing hormone, corpus luteum. But if it wasn't for the, lutein, uh, the, the luteinizing hormone, 
there wouldn't be ovulation and there wouldn't be the formation of the corpus luteum. So, estrogen, the high estrogen level, will cause the pituitary to release luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone, now, look here, progesterone sits here and sits here. Let's get progesterone another color. Progesterone sits along here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. And then, what makes it become higher and higher and increase here? It's the luteinizing hormone. Because once ovulation takes place, which is what happens here, and this isn't looking great on the screen, once ovulation takes place, and that little ovum is released, luteinizing hormone helps with the formation of the corpus luteum. And that's what this little guy is. It's a corpus luteum. And what's the corpus luteum's job? Its job is to release the corpus luteum has two jobs. The one is, let me just bring this down a bit, to release progesterone. Remember, the corpus luteum is still sitting here in the ovary, hey? Huh? So it releases progesterone. That's why we say it is an ovarian hormone, number one. And number two, it maintains, this progesterone maintains the endometrial lining. So it's the progesterone that makes this endometrium lining nice and thick. So it is glandular and it is full of blood vessels. Because the glandular, because it takes over making progesterone after 12 weeks, and lots of little blood vessels. Why? Because it's getting ready for a fertilized egg to implant and sit there and then grow a placenta, and we have a new little baby that then starts, or a fetus that starts to grow, and we end up with a little bubba in the world. Okay, so if you understand how everything here works, when we talk about the uterine cycle, it's about the uterus and this endometrium being nice and thick. Ovarian cycle and the hormones, it's estrogen and progesterone. Estrogen is released by the graphion follicle and progesterone is released by the corpus luteum. Okay? Now, this progesterone, when you're pregnant, you don't want to ovulate. You don't want to have another uh, 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 fertilization and then sit with pregnancy with one, one fetus, you, you're three months pregnant, and the next one you're four months pregnant, and the next one you're five months pregnant. We won't be able to move. We won't be able to walk as women. So you can only have one pregnancy from day one to, day, to nine months down the road. Okay, that's it. That's all you can have. You can't have more. So you've got to stop the pituitary from releasing follicle-stimulating hormone. Why? Because you don't want any follicles. The follicles must wait until this pregnancy is finished. Okay, it should only happen when, this, when, when, when we know for sure fertilization didn't occur and the whole cycle must start again. Then you menstruate. Menstruation's from day one to about day three, four, five, and then the whole story starts again. So how do we stop the pituitary from releasing follicle-stimulating hormone? Easy. That's what the corpus luteum does. It releases the progesterone. The progesterone maintains the lining of the, of the um, uterus. But you know what else the progesterone does? Progesterone is going to inhibit the pituitary gland from producing follicle-stimulating hormone. So all the time, the level of progesterone is high, it's going to stop the pituitary from releasing follicle-stimulating hormone. Whereas it comes down, we now know that no fertilization took place. And if there was no fertilization, 
then that level of progesterone comes down. It means that the, the endometrium is no longer maintained and the progesterone is no longer inhibiting the pituitary gland. 